welcome kind-hearted viewers to Animal World, our co-inhabitants. Today, we are honored to talk with Professor Gary L. Franchone. Known as a pioneer of the abolitionist theory of animal rights, Gary L. Franchone is a renowned professor of law and philosophy at Rutgers University Law School in Newark, New Jersey, USA. He was the first to teach animal rights theory in an American law school and has lectured on the topic worldwide throughout the United States, Canada, and Europe. He has authored many books on the topic including Rain Without Thunder, The Ideology of the Animal Rights Movement, Animals, Property, and the Law, and Vivisection and Dissection in the Classroom, A Guide to Conscientious Objection. Joining us today is Professor Franchone to give us some insight into the abolitionist theory and how a vegan lifestyle can help benefit not only animals and humankind, but also ease the drastic effects of global warming on our planet. When you accept the abolitionist approach, what makes sense in that context is to say, I'm going to reject animal slavery. I can't get rid of it all immediately from the society, but I can get rid of it pretty much from my life because I make the decision about what goes in my mouth, what, what I wear on my body, what I use on my body. And so if you accept the abolitionist approach, all of these things just go out of your life. So in other words, veganism is accepting the principle of abolition into your own life. Yes, and we see in our society that there is a contradiction uh, in our behavior because we do love animals. We have them as a companion at our home. We like, we love to watch the animals movie. And in the same time, we are indifferent and they're suffering and even we are not aware of, of it. And uh, we eat their flesh. That's an excellent observation. We do look at our relationship with non-humans in very, very confused ways. We all agree that it's wrong to inflict unnecessary suffering, yet the suffering and death that we inflict on animals can only be justified by reasons of pleasure, amusement, or convenience. For example, the food issue. Um, we are killing 10 billion animals for food for, per year. That is approximately 300 animals per second, every second, of every minute, of every hour, of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year. That's staggering when we think about it, isn't it? And what is the reason? No one maintains anymore in the, in the 21st century that we need to eat animals to lead a healthy lifestyle. Animal products are killing us. That the more animal products we eat, the worse our health is. We eat animal products, meat, dairy, fish, butter, eggs, whatever. The best justification we have is it tastes good. That's not a, that's not a morally sufficient justification. There's no necessity for it. So on one hand we say no unnecessary suffering. On the other hand, the suffering and death that we impose are not necessary. And you made a point at the beginning of your question about how many of us live with non-human animals. And, and that's true. We live with dogs, we live with cats, we live with other non-human companions. And we realize that these animals are sentient. That is, they have subjective awareness. They feel pain. They are aware of themselves. They are, they are conscious. They have uh, uh, minds like we have minds. Their minds may be different from ours, but they have minds. And we recognize that these animals have personalities. We love them. Uh, when they die, we mourn them, we grieve them. Yet, we turn around and we stick forks into other animals that are no different from the animals who are members of our family. There's something very peculiar about that. And I think that if we think about it, we would come to the conclusion that our thinking about non-humans is very confused. A United Nations report in 2006 and many scientists have now confirmed the untold damage a meat diet has on the environment. Animal products are an environmental disaster. It takes between 6 and 12 pounds of plant protein to produce one pound of flesh. It takes about a thousand times more water to produce flesh than it does to produce potatoes or wheat. It takes two hectares of land to support 
one omnivore. It takes one half hectare to support 20 vegans. So the, it takes 80 times more land, basically, to support the lifestyle of an omnivore than it does to support the lifestyle of a vegan. We are feeding, in the United States alone, yeah. enough grain, wheat, soybeans, etc., to animals every day. We could give two loaves of bread to every human being on the planet. You're watching Animal World, our co-inhabitants, here on Supreme Master Television. Please stay tuned as our interview with Professor Franchone continues after these brief messages. Trash Impactor. If just one million people cut down their trash by 10%, we could reduce our yearly CO2 emissions by as much as 50,000 tons. Answer the call. This could be good. Hey, you. our co-inhabitants today, Professor Franchone explains why meat consumption is not only an issue about animal welfare, but how it is a serious cause of global warming and health-related problems. The United Nations Food um, and Agricultural Organization recently uh, presented a report that said that animal agriculture was as serious, if not more serious, a problem for global warming yeah. than the consumption of fossil fuels. Yeah. Think about this. I mean, we are destroying habitat, rainforest, wooded areas, so that we can continue to make more area for cows, and more cows, and more pigs, and more chickens, and more sheep, so that they can graze, so that we can raise more meat, so that we can deal with the increasing meat demand. Yeah. This is serious, and this is going to have serious, serious consequences, not only for the animals whose lives we're taking and on whom, upon whom we are inflicting treatment that is tantamount to torture, but for our health and for the environment. And I always tell people, sometimes people say to me, I don't care about animals. And I say, well, do you care about human beings? And I say, well, yes, of course, I care about human beings. But I say, fine, if you care about human beings, you think about the fact that our diet, is condemning a substantial portion of the world's population to starvation. And you tell me how you can make that work for you. If you care about humans, why do you not care about the food riots that are going on right now? This is not a matter of history, right now. Professor Franchone believes that awareness is the key to change. The reality is most of us don't know where our food comes from. Mm -hmm. I mean, you take a place like Paris, mm -hmm. um, many people who live here can live here for you know, their lives or most of their lives and never see an abattoir. Mm -hmm. The abattoirs are out in the country. Um, they're not set up like museums that welcome people to come and visit, particularly you know, as, as time goes on and, and you know, they, they get more and more concerned about people coming in with cameras and photographic equipment, etc. But I think if people saw the way animals are raised, mm -hmm. from the moment they're born to the moment they're slaughtered, it is really horrible. I think we need to sort of and understand that um, violence only begets violence. Violence is never the solution to a problem. Never. It never works. It just creates more problems. And, and as part of it, you see, I don't really in many ways see the animal issue as a separate issue. I see it as all part of the violence that has become the way of life that we all accept now. I think it's very, very important for us to sort of say, no, 
We're not going to be blasé about this anymore. We're, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. I want my government using my tax money to help the poor, to provide health care for people, to provide for differently able people. I have no problem with my tax money being used for social welfare purposes. And I think we really do need to sort of focus on this notion that peace is important and nonviolence is not just some pie-in-the-sky principle. It's a very, very, very practical principle. For me, my veganism and my advocacy of the abolition of animal exploitation is really part of that rejection of violence. To me, my principles of nonviolence begin when I get up in the morning, what do I put in my mouth? <laughs> Am I going to eat a piece of bacon which comes from some poor pig who has been tortured, whose life has been taken, who has grown up in a horrible situation, and who has eaten uh, all of this grain that should have been fed to people um, so that I can eat the, the piece of bacon which is going to clog my arteries and give me a heart attack anyway. Is that what I should do or should I, you know, should I eat grains or should I eat fruits or vegetables or nuts which I can only eat a, a smaller quantity of which doesn't result in the suffering or death of another being. The way I look at it, I see the abolitionist movement and the commitment to veganism as part of the general movement against nonviolence is part of the peace movement, basically. And I think that's very, very important, that rejecting violence begins with you, with the individual. It's not a theoretical matter. It's not something you say, oh, I think it's a good idea in an abstract way. Mm -hmm. It's something that matters to you. And the way you personalize that message and that commitment to nonviolence, you do that with what you put in your mouth, what you wear, what you use on your body, what you consume. More and more people practice nonviolence in their lives by becoming vegan, meaning an animal free diet, the suffering of countless vulnerable animals will cease. The natural resource of grain that currently goes into raising livestock would help solve world hunger. Veganism and nonviolence are truly the answers for many of our current global concerns. If more of us and more of us and more of us said, we don't want violence, we don't want it in our lives, we don't want it in our, we don't want our governments to support it, and we're not going to support it. We need a political movement, a, a movement which challenges the exploitation of the vulnerable and the underprivileged, and that gives real meaning and life to this idea of justice that we all yeah. say we believe in. So in a sense, it really is putting our money where our mouth is and being serious about our commitments to these ideals. But that commitment begins with us as the individual. The one thing you have in your power to do, you can do it right now, today. You don't have to wait until next week. You don't have to have it part of a campaign. Right now, today, you can decide to get violence out of your life by becoming vegan. And I think that's an important first step for people to take. You're watching Animal World, our co-inhabitants, here on Supreme Master Television. Please stay tuned as our interview with Professor Franchone continues after these brief messages.
We now resume our discussion with Professor Francione on the theme of abolishing the use of animal products to save our planet. He speaks of how becoming a vegan will not only end the exploitation of animals, but will also contribute to world peace. I really can't think of this issue, the issue of animal exploitation, without also thinking about the exploitation of women, the exploitation of people of color, the exploitation of children, the exploitation of differently abled people. All of these things that we do that are totally inconsistent with the ideal of justice that most of us claim and sincerely claim mm -hmm. to hold very near and dear to our hearts. Well, now it's time to do something about this and we can do it. This is the thing. We can do it if we're committed. We can do it, and it's not that difficult. People often always ask me, isn't it hard to be a vegan? I've been a vegan for 26 yeah. years, yeah. and it is not difficult at all. The basics of a vegan diet, fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains, you can get anywhere on the planet. In places like France and in places like Paris, you can actually buy quite a bit of prepared foods. I've been going around to your health food stores. They have an absolutely enormous selection of prepared foods, if that's what you wish to buy. As far as natural foods are concerned and whole foods are concerned, all you need, fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains. With a little bit of soja, a little bit of yeah. tofu uh, or soya, you can do miraculous things and make wonderful tasting food and that's good for you and good for your family, good for your body, good for the planet and most yeah. importantly good for yeah. the animals. A lot of the, the, the people who, who have been involved in the animal movement are increasingly seeing that um, the regulatory approach, the welfareist approach, the idea that well it's all right to use them but let's 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 treat them better, mm. that those laws aren't working, that that approach isn't working. We ought to move away from those sorts of approaches and sort of and, and, and just explain to people veganism is simple, it, it's very very simple for you to do, it tastes good, it's good for the animals, it's good for your health, mm. it's good for the planet. In appreciation of Professor Franchone's work promoting peace, nonviolence, and the abolition of animal products, he was presented with Supreme Master Ching Hai's number one best selling book, The Birds in My Life. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. I think I share the view that um, many non-human animals, or perhaps most non-human animals, have more noble qualities, unfortunately, than many members of our species have, and that they're more enlightened. And if there is one final message I can give to your viewers, I would say, go vegan, stay vegan, it's easy, uh, it is much better for the animals, uh, it's the just thing to do for the animals. It's good for your health, it's good for the environment, and um, just think about the next time uh, when you're sitting down at a table with your dog or your cat or uh, other non-human companion that you have there, and you're about to put that fork into that piece of meat. Think about what a strange, strange thing that is. And don't do it. <laughs>